Hello, humanity. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever in the world you might be. I am reading this absolutely amazing book that I've actually had for about 10 years now, and I would love to share a story with you. My name is Fifth, and we are in beautiful Oroville. And this month, we're actually talking about kids who are making a difference. They're making decisions, and they are taking over the world in the most beautiful way. Fabulous way. So this story, and the reason I want to read it is because I want to use Spencer West's words. And he joined Free the Children on a school building project in Kenya. He's now one of their speakers who tours schools and helps young people to believe in themselves. And he's part. this is part of the message that he often shares. So when you see him, he doesn't have legs. So that puts it in context for you. And this is in his words. I thought I would start by answering the question that all of you have in your mind right now. And that is, where are my legs? Well, when I was a kid, I went to a magic show and they asked for a volunteer from the audience to get sawed in half. And then they would put them back together again. I raised my hand. Obviously, the magician got fired and my legs are still in the box. (laughs) So for those of you who laughed, that's awesome. And for those of you who didn't, that's okay too. I want all of you to be comfortable with me, not to be afraid to ask questions or to laugh because we always need much, much more laughter in the world. But in all seriousness, the reason I don't have legs is because I was born with a genetic disease called sacral agenesis, which caused the muscles in my legs not to work. At the age of five, they were amputated just below my pelvis so that I could move around better. I was told that I would never ever walk by myself, sit up by myself, or even be a functioning member of society. But my parents and I set out to prove ourselves and the rest of the world that I could be just like anyone else. But because I looked different than other people, I was singled out. Most people were just curious and wanted to understand me. But being different also meant that I got bullied. And as I got older, the boys in my school started to play sports. And I couldn't but I didn't really want to either. So I hung out with the girls. But because of this, I was called names like, hey, faggot, gay, queer. All these insults were thrown at me and to make me feel bad about myself. But whether I was gay or queer or a fag, it was irrelevant because I wasn't going to feel bad about myself. Um, They called me names because I was hanging out with the girls. So when I was in high school, I became a cheerleader. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, ah, if I didn't have legs, I'd be a cheerleader too, huh? Hmm. Well, one day at a game, I overheard one of the girls in the crowd saying, what's he doing out there? This isn't the handicap team. And there again was another label used to describe which I knew was untrue. So after school finished, I moved to Arizona and I started working in a job that I didn't really like. I knew I had a lot more potential. And then one day, my dear friend Reed Cowan invited me to go to Kenya. Yeah, where he had been building schools with Free the Children in the name of his son who had tragically passed away. You know, after a lot of thought, I accepted and I embarked on a trip that changed my life forever. The minute I got to Kenya, I felt peace. and I felt dignity. I also felt excitement because on the first day that I arrived at Free the Children, 
I was instantly surrounded by all these kids. And there were swarms of school kids. And they were laughing and laughing. And they were playing. And they were pointing at me. And they were speaking a mile a minute in a language I didn't understand. And when we finished a tour of their school, they all sat around me in the grass and asked me every question under the sun. <clears throat> Then, at the very, very end, Of the conversation, one of the girls raised her hand and said, I didn't know this sort of thing happened to white people, too. Ah. Up until this point, I had been trying to prove that I was just like everyone else. At this moment, I realized that I was different. And I was different for a reason. I was different because I needed to show others. Mm -hmm. I needed to show others. Uh, da, 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 here, I, like the kids in Kenya, that it doesn't matter what your disability or what your abilities are. And where you come from in the world, what color your skin is, what your gender is, or your sexual orientation. If you work hard with others and never give up and laugh, laugh a lot, you can achieve anything. I am different. We are all different. And with our differences together, we can achieve greatness as long as we aren't afraid to walk Our own path. And this, can you hone in there? That is Spencer West. And he is going around the world laughing and just bringing joy to so many people. So we're going to take this episode out of here and we're going to laugh because we are different. We are different. We are bold. We are beautiful. No matter what our abilities are, we are absolutely fantastic. So give yourselves a pat on the back for being who you are. When we come back next week for the next episode, my dear Mayel is going to share with us some of the situations he's been in and some situations that have made him beautiful and different. On that note, Stefano, shall we laugh our way out of here? And let's laugh ourselves for who we are. And <laughs> take a moment to feel it and be proud of who you are. <laughs> <laughs> the world needs kids like all of us to be who we are free the children absolutely <laughs>